Hello, this is going to be a quick tutorial. It's actually a tutorial that I sent to Joanna from Hampton's Drones. And I'm just going to quickly redo this because a couple of people had asked for it. This is my method of grading D-log footage, which I know some people struggle with. I'm using DaVinci Resolve. If you're using something else, don't use DaVinci Resolve. It's really great. But um, anyway, I'm going to use DaVinci Resolve, but other things might have a similar thing. Um, and I'm just going to quickly show you um, how we go from something like this to uh, to something that looks a bit nicer. I'm using this footage that, uh, that Joanna sent me uh, as an example. Um, and I'm just going to go step by step. It's going to be warts and all. Uh, so there may be some coughs and some ums and things like that. But um, let's just let's just get going. I've, I've broken it out into several different things. If you don't know about DaVinci Resolve, they have this concept called nodes. So the first thing is put some footage into your timeline because it only works when it's in a timeline and then switch over here to the color tab. And over here we have these things called nodes. Um, if you don't see nodes, let me turn all these things off. If you don't see nodes up in the top right hand corner, click on nodes up here. Initially, you'll just have one node. I've already set up several um, and, and they're a bit like layers. If you're used to layers in Photoshop, they kind of work the same way. So the left hand side is the input and the right hand side is the output and everything in between affects the thing before it. So if I change this first node, that's going to feed into the second node um, and you'll see how that works as we go through. So the first thing, first of all, what is D-Log? Um, I think of D-Log as just a way for uh, when you're recording, it squishes all of the colors and everything into the middle. Um, the net result is that coming out of the camera, it looks horrible. But the good news is that it uh, it stops you blowing out the highlights or crushing the blacks. Um, so all the details are still in there. All right. But the net result is that, um, you know, everything is squished in the middle. So if you look over here on the right hand side at the scopes, you can see that um, you know, everything here, all the colors are in the middle. Uh, other people do this differently, by the way. So, and, and your screen might look different to this because DaVinci Resolve will adjust to whatever screen setup you have. So if you have dual monitors, things like that. So um, how things look, you're going to have to just hunt around. But I've got this set up. I've got my color wheels on the left. I've got my curves and some other things in the middle. And I've got my scopes on the right. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to adjust the exposure because as you can see from this curves here and from the scopes over here, everything is squished in the middle. I'm going to make this adjustment, but we may have to come back and, and readjust this later once we've applied some other things because we may find that we, we go too far. But um, there's several different ways to do this. One is come into the curves and drag this, this little dot here over towards where the bottom of the the colors are and then similarly on the right hand side we're gonna we're gonna bring this in here right and right away you can see we've brightened the image up quite considerably um, by the way if you do if you click on this little thing up here that turns off and on the um, adjustments that you've made so if, if you do this everything is bypassed you can also do it individually if you click on a node and do Control or Command D that turns on and off just that node. So anyway, here we are. We've got the image brightened. So this is what it looked like before and this is what it looks like after. So we're already starting to look a bit better. Um, I didn't go all the way. You could you could go all the way, but I don't want to do that yet because when we apply the LUT, which is the next thing that I'm going to do, then then you'll see that, that that's going to brighten the image as well. So now let's look at applying a LUT. What is a LUT? A LUT stands for a lookup table. It's basically just a bunch of color grading elements or adjustments that somebody has created and then stored in a file. Um, and you can adjust those pretty quickly. So I'm going to click over here into LUTs. I've got a bunch of them loaded already. If you don't see the one that you want and you know that you've got a file, you can download them from various places like DJI has them on their website. You can download from there. Um, what you would do is you would come over here, click on this little wheel in the corner, go to the color management page, 
go down to the lookup table section in the middle, click open LUT folder. Your LUTs will all be here. You can organize them however you want. And what you would do is you would just drag your new LUT into this folder wherever you need it. Once it's in the LUT folder, you would select update LUTs, click save. And when you come back here, your LUT will be available for use. Okay, so I'm going to apply a LUT. This is, um, I think this is Mavic 3 Cine footage in D-Log. Um, I've got the Mavic 3 D-Log um, LUT over here. And you can actually see what it looks like when you scroll through, which is kind of, kind of cool. Um, but just hovering over it will show you what it looks like. And if you want to apply that, you double click. So what do we do? We click on the click on the adjustment here. By the way, if you want to add a new adjustment, I should have mentioned this. So if I wanted to add a new one at the end here, um, I would just do Alt or Option S and it's going to add a new serial node. All right. I'm just going to delete that. I've already added all the nodes that I want. Um, but uh, that's that's how you add them. Um, another way to do it is just literally right click and say add node serial node. We won't go into parallel nodes and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, so here we are. We're gonna we're gonna apply um, a LUT here. I'm gonna apply the the Mavic three LUT, but you can actually there's no rule that says you have to apply that. You can apply any LUT you want. So you know if you happen to think that the x7 LUT looks good use it I mean by all means there's there's nothing wrong with that and there are companies that sell LUTs so but we're just going to double click to add this one okay so now we've got two adjustments in here right we have the exposure which I showed you earlier and we've got the, the LUT I keep turning it off by clicking in the wrong spot um, and you can see here it looks looks pretty good I'd say it's a little bright on the on the upper end so I might go back to my exposure and just push that a little bit over to the right just to bring it down a bit okay um, so now we've got two adjustments right and what does it look like um, this is before and this is after okay so now the the third thing I'm going to do I'm going to move over to a new node by the way the advantage of doing things in different nodes is that if you do something wrong you can just reset that node and start again. So, uh, you know, you don't have to try and figure out all the things that you did wrong and undo things. So it just gives you an option to basically compartmentalize the changes that you're making. So um, this is one where real colorists, by the way, I would never claim to be a colorist, um, not in a million years. I'm a typical guy, so I really only see seven colors, but, uh, a real colorist might turn their nose up at this one, but I find that it frequently works quite well. So I'm just going to use it. Uh, I'm all about doing things quickly if I can. So what am I going to do? I'm going to click here. We're going to select a frame. The frame you select is quite important. I'm going to move up to about here. I'm going to use this frame as a, as a reference frame. And then we're going to come into this color wheels section down here. And you'll see this little button marked A for auto balance. I'm just going to click on that. And what's going to happen is um, Da Vinci is going to analyze the footage and then, and then make a guess about what it thinks the colors should look like. OK, so this is this is what it thinks it looks like. This is before this is after. Again, looks like the colors have, have gone a bit down here and a bit too high up here. So I'm going to come back and adjust my exposure, push this out a little bit and maybe Bring that up a bit there. Okay. Um, some people, by the way, don't do the exposure first. They do it much later. It's entirely up to you. Um, so again, this is before, this is after. Um, if you don't like that, you can actually pick a different reference frame and then hit auto again. Um, it will adjust based on just the frame that you have. So that's, that's the sort of trick there. So I'm going to leave that. So auto is, is done. Um, I'm going to move over another node and I'm going to do some color adjustments, right? So um, let's say you wanted a little bit more color in this, um, in your color section down here. You can either boost the saturation of it. That's one way to do it. 50 is the default. Um, personally, I actually kind of like this color boost. I find that 
is a little more interesting. It sort of boosts the colors without changing the exposure. Um, so I don't want to give it too much because otherwise it starts looking a little, a little fake and a little crazy, you know, if you go really far. But, you know, maybe around uh, 20, 20 percent, something like that. Um, so let's have a look. This is before and this is after. You can see it's a subtle difference, but maybe we'll go just a little bit more just to give it a little bit of a pop. So this is before and this is after. OK, so that's the colors. Uh, now we're going to do an S curve. S curves are done in this section here. And you don't want to go too crazy with this and you sort of play around with it. But, you know, generally speaking, you know, raising this and bringing that down just a little bit kind of just makes it stand out. I don't know exactly why, but it just sort of gives it a little pop. So it doesn't have to be too crazy and you can definitely move this this backwards and forwards until you until you see something that you think looks pretty good. But I'm just going to keep it around about there. So again, before after I think you can see it's just got a little more zip to it um, and then the final one that I do frequently is sharpen um, footage that comes out of DJI drones tends to be a little just a little soft unless you've changed it in your settings so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to sharpen and in the curves section we're going to move over to this little bit here with the teardrop and the triangle and by default, it's going to be on blur, but we're going to change it to the sharpen one, this triangle. And you don't have to make much change here. It's a very small thing, but, you, you know, it starts off at about 50. I'm going to bring this down to about 46, maybe 47. You can you can easily do too much here. It's a very small adjustment. But um, if I go full screen and then do before and after, I think you can see there's a definite difference there. A uh, full screen, by the way, control or command F get to full screen um, and the same to get out. So that's it. That's my method of of color grading quickly. Um, again, looking over here, little little bright. I might just come back to my original one here. Just push this a little bit over to the right again, just to bring that down. And you, and you do tend to find that you just sort of go back over things. But that's it. Um, this is this is rapidly color graded. I wouldn't say it's perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, there's a million other ways to do this, a million ways to different skin these cats. But um, this is the before and this is the after. Let's go full screen before and after. I think you can see even even with my meager skills um, that's significantly better anyway i hope that is useful uh feel free to drop a comment or let me have any thoughts um and if you've got better ways to do things by all means share them because i don't know everything not by a long stretch so anyway hopefully that was useful and look forward to hearing from you